I'm here at the Space Crete headquarters with founder Michael Butler. And we're gonna take a look at the four Space Crete buildings and learn about the new building they're gonna be working on. Thank you so much for letting me stop by. Let's take a look around. All right, all right. Hello, I'm Michael Butler. I've been developing Space Crete. Um, we came up with 3D Admix, which is a, a Admix that we inject into a line of pump concrete to take normal everyday concrete and turn it into something that you can slip form or 3D print. This is the slip form that we used on this last job. This is uh, what we, we, we raise this up in a controlled manner. We place concrete behind it. This has a special surface that lubricates, so water comes through this material. Um, and so this thing is just on a controlled axis, which lifts it up. And as it goes up, it creates a concrete wall. This is one of the versions we use to drive that screed. So this is a, a lifting scaffold, put a couple of motors on it, and we would use this to lift the screed uh, and place the concrete. This is a test project for, for doing this with an excavator. You mentioned the new system with a greater degree of automation is attached to an excavator? Yes, yeah, there, there's, um, <clears throat> since excavators now have GPS and digital control, then they have attachments that articulate and can define a surface. So we combine that with a controlled deposition of concrete to use that to, to build concrete walls. Very cool, we'll take a look at that along with the retaining wall you built with it at the end of the video. Sure. So this is all concrete except for at the top. You can see where it's, where it's cracking there. That's actually wood. We, we, we cheaped out and used wood on, on the beams. Um, and that doesn't hold up, but the concrete holds up really well. And this is a perfect environment for that because it's a greenhouse that would cause the wood to rot. And it's holding up perfectly well. It's going to be here longer than me. You have an automated irrigation system? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, we've had people come and break into this thinking we were growing pot, but we're not. <laughs> they stole just, your tomatoes. Just tomatoes. No, they were sorely disappointed, I'm sure. This is a compost privy. Uh, we're going to look inside and, and in the bins, but this is where human waste is converted into usable compost. Um, I, was, I was living on a farm where they built one of these, and it was amazing how well it worked. But this is the perfect use for sculptable concrete because you have something which you don't want to rot and you want it to be clean and, and sanitary and so. And then you just dump in a little uh, You put in a little mulch. sawdust. Yeah, so here this one's not been used so you can look in this one. And that's the bin, we're gonna go look at that later. Um, you have ventilation. Um, it even has a place where like, you can put your, your pee in a different direction so you can use your pee separate from the poop. Black water. Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, you don't want to use the poop in vegetables, but you can use it in the fruit trees. So this is all solid concrete. The whole thing is like four inch concrete that was done without forms. Does this, it have this wire mesh? No, no. it doesn't. It's a, this, this is over the foam on the building. This addition to the building is uninsulated. It's just solid concrete. So above the wire, you put the fireproofing. Yes, that would be that would be a one inch of stucco, something like that. So he, he, this bin, now this one hasn't been used yet. You want to keep everything dry, and so that's why again you want this to be all concrete. It's got good waterproofing in it. This is actually a super green building because all the foam for this building uh, came out of a trash bin, and all these windows came from a junkyard. Nice. So. This is extremely recycled in material. Um, and what we're seeing here is waterproofing over the foam, the concrete's on the inside. And just like the, the other building um, that we'll see next, the concrete is insulated from the world. So the concrete on the inside goes all the way down with foam wrapping it. Even the bottom of the footing is, is, it has insulation so that that thermal mass never sees the coldness of the earth or, the, or of the outside or the wetness of, of either one. We can go inside and look at it here. It's um, very full of stuff. This is construction materials for the house. So it's kind of full of things, but... It's, Great storage. So it's four inches of concrete here. And that with then with uh, in this case only three inches of foam outside of it. Um, the, we didn't use any uh, mechanical stuff at all in this. This was just people standing on scaffolding mm -hmm. 
and, and working it. So this is a pump house. Again, this one's solid concrete that was slip formed in place here. Um, <clears throat> same salvage door and window, but it's really cool to have an outbuilding like this that's out of solid concrete um, because it won't rot. And if you frame a wood building in this environment, it will rot. It will, within 20, 30 years, you'll be doing repairs. How long does it take you to get a small structure like this up? Well, one day. One day. I mean, yeah, yeah, one day to do the walls. I mean, if we don't do it in one day, we've, we've got a problem. In fact, this one, we did have a problem. We were trying to do the foundation and the walls at the same time, and that didn't work. We, that was too ambitious. So we had to do the foundation and stop, and then we had to do the walls. This building is a remodel, actually, a major remodel, but the reason we did that is because we wanted to keep the position within a few feet of the property line. It didn't have to be 30 feet away to meet CAL FIRE requirements. It doesn't have stucco on the outside. It actually has half-inch cement board with uh, a thin coat of plaster over that. And then it's four inches of foam and four inches of concrete. So all of the concrete, again, is on the inside, insulated all the way down, not even touching the earth. and the foam goes all the way down with it and with very minimal thermal breaks in it. So this is um, another version of the lubricated form surface. So here we have a controlled flow of water done with, uh, it's actually out of water now, but um, this is an, a real simple, cheap way to control some water to test these. And this is a, another porous material that- You can see I, it dripping. Yeah, that if you put concrete on here, you will get, um, it will slip right off. So this is the core of the modulator. And what this is, is that it's a surge compensator for a concrete pump. The, the, the cylinder switching concrete pumps have extreme surge and that's not conducive to automation. Um, what this does is that this geometry allows that surge compensation to work better than your average uh, surge suppressor. Here are some of the supplementary cementitious materials that I just wanted to show what they look like. So slag, pretty clean looking stuff, and then uh, limestone powder, which is no surprise. Fly ash, which is very lightweight and, and has good lubrication, internal lubrication. And then metacalin, which is a calcined clay. So it doesn't shrink as much as an uncalcined clay. Um, this works with all of these supplementary cementitious materials just about the same as it, as it does with cement. And that's what this construction is. This is four inches of concrete, the foam thickness, whatever you want, can be two inches, can be six inches, and, um, that I think should be put in place first because you get better control that way. And then water control layer, water control layer, and then um, ideally fireproof stuck on the outside of that. These are two of the inline mixers. This is the one that's suitable for 3D printing. Um, with multiple ports. And then these are the, the blades that do the mixing. And here you can see down that one, that's what happens in there. It's uh, um, This particular design turned out to work really well. It took me a few itera iterations to get there. And uh, another material is quick lime, which isn't exactly a supplementary cementitious uh, material, but it is uh, something which is getting a lot of interest now because of self-healing concrete. So working with putting the quick, quick lime into also into the 3D admix. These don't go in the 3D admix. These are just materials you use as a binder to, to, to build with. So I do have now some mix that I can make. I have some sand and aggregate, and I'm just going to show you that that's just there's that's just water it's been soaking overnight so that it's not going to dry out too quickly so i'm just mixing it up and then i'm going to put the binder that has these various things this is uh, half supplementary and half cement um, and i'm not going to put all of it in there right away because you might not need it Okay, try a little bit more water. It's good to hold a little bit of powder back in case you accidentally add too much water. <laughs> like, like
like I just did, so I have to put it in now. So this mix, you can see this is really wet, right? You could pour, I could just, I could just pour this out. This is a self-leveling mix. And I already put in some uh, high range water reducer. So this isn't really as wet as it looks, but still this is pretty wet. So this is a far cry from anything you could build with vertically. This is something that will just, I mean, it just runs like water, okay? Now I'm gonna add some 3D mix to this. Um, this is not an extreme version, it's a middle of the road. A little a, towards the extreme, but not totally extreme. So I'll put this back down here where I can do it. So I'm just gonna put like a spoonful. Okay, maybe, maybe two spoonfuls, because I don't know, we, this is pretty wet. Okay, not very much. Let's see what happens. Two little teaspoons Two. isn't going to change that mix. Come on. Wow. So it's not, it's not totally stiff. I could have dosed it higher and maybe I will just for a demo, but huge difference. Okay. So it's still, now this, this is probably about right for a job. If you poured that out before, it wouldn't be on the table. No, it would be all over the floor, right. Okay, so I'm gonna dose it higher just for the purposes of our demo. Yeah, start on the top. Okay, that's good. Good. Okay, see? All right. Now we have a nice concrete wall. And if I was stronger and we had more concrete around, you could vibrate it more thoroughly. In fact, the vibration efficiency is a limiting factor. We can build vertically faster than we can vibrate it. Here, I'm gonna put, there's some 3D admix. And now I'm gonna give it a little bit of water. It's like Elmer's glue. It's not as sticky as Elmer's glue though. Okay, now let me add some water, a little bit more water. Okay, now, when you mix 3D Admix in water, it gels. And you see, it doesn't happen right away, and that's, that's intentional. So now, see how this is a, those are, the, those are the thickening solids. So they react to the presence of water, and they also react more strongly in an alkali environment, or a high, high pH environment. This is uh, the attachment, uh, one version of it anyway, that we use with the excavator, which is very crude. It just clamps onto this piece of pipe. The inline mixer connects to this. And then we have this irrigation system with the membrane taken off uh, to keep this thing lubricated. Um, this has a surface vibrator, which I haven't used this version yet. This is uh, something which I built and then found a one serious design flaw which I have to change, but this is the same essential device that we use to build that retaining wall. So this is controlled by an excavator or a backhoe, uh, ideally with GPS or digital control and with some positioning equipment attached to it, which we have a version of that too um, in design. And <clears throat> this will be where the concrete comes out and this is where it's vibrated. And then the bottom part is isolated so that when you vibrate the top, the bottom part doesn't vibrate and you don't collapse the wall below the below the screeder. Very cool. Let's see the wall you built with it. All right. Um, it's like three and a half feet tall, um, a little bit taller because we, we had to put in some rock after we built it. Uh, this does not have any control joints in it and that actually wasn't the plan. We did plan to put them in, 
Um, and then things didn't go according to plan when we placed the concrete, mostly because the concrete was way too wet and we didn't have a good, good 3D admix at the time. This is a much uh, less powerful 3D admix, <clears throat> but it still worked. We got it done <clears throat> that morning. And uh, um, because it didn't have control joints, we did get some cracking in it because it's 90 feet long, but not bad. I mean, you'd, have, you'd be hard pressed to find any right now. So uh, the 3D admix does seem to reduce cracking permanently, particularly the early plastic shrinkage cracking.